Hi there. This video is the four week update for these mini Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuyl Doodles and this is our four week update video for the puppies from our surprise pack litter. These puppies are chocolate sable mini Australian Labradoodle puppies. And at four weeks old, they've got a whole lot of things that they're just excited to tell you about that they've accomplished in the past week. So the first thing that is happening, you can see we have moved where we're doing our videos and that we don't have Bernadette with us. So the puppies are all going to be individually shown to you. We'll tell you about their weights. We'll tell you about the litter as a whole. And we'll also tell you about Bernadette. So Orange Collar Boy is always our starting boy because he was the first born in the litter. So he's going to sit here for a little while longer than his siblings. So the litter as a whole, their big news, well, they have two bits of big news. One is they have moved to larger real estate. They have a much bigger house now and lots of room to start running around and exercising their little bodies. And that means they have moved out to the doodle den. So Ripple had her puppies. And uh, when Ripple had her puppies, we took these puppies and put them in our living room. And then when that space just got to be too small for them, and they were starting to jump out of the whelping box all the time, we knew it was time to move them over to the doodle den. So now they have a really nice, generous size amount of space where they can move and run. They have toys that they could start to enter interact with and they've also are learning how to sleep in a crate. So they all sleep in a crate. They all went in there naturally. That's where they like to be. That's their safe spot. And so when all the different new experiences are going on in the doodle den, all sorts of sounds and all sorts of activity, they can go in the crate, they can look out, but they feel very safe because they're in their nice, safe, enclosed spot. You can see how much they can move now by watching Orange Collar here deciding that he should go and explore and see what might be out here for him to get into trouble with. So they're really starting to be adventurous now. And Reynolds just passed me a little toy. Maybe we'll see if he thinks this is something that catches his eye. They're just sort of starting to get interested in toys. They will chew on things because guess what? That's another milestone. Teeth are coming in. They're not all the ways in yet, but they definitely have teeth. And Purple Collar in particular, if she's playing with you, you can feel those teeth already. He, what's that? What's that? Now the other big thing that they have accomplished in this past week is they're eating solid food. That's always a big step. And you will see some of that food on some of the puppies this week. So we have them bath them. They're still a little bit young for a bath. And when they first learn to eat, while well, they step in it, they sometimes actually fall right into the pan. They skid across it. And then they get it all over each other when they're playing. And so we end up with some spots of food on our puppies. So you will see a couple of little spots on each of these guys because they are all eating out of the pan. Now, Mr. Orange Collar Boy, he was the second one to figure out how to eat out of the pan. And now that he's got that mastered, oh, he just thinks that's the best thing ever. Oh, yes, he does. And we got lots of kisses. And he knows right away when Reynolds or I come up and say, puppy, puppy, puppy. Oh, that means the dish is coming. Yes. And so that's a very exciting time. You'll see he thinks maybe there's something to eat on my face. <laughs> so Mr. Orange Collar Boy has cracked the one kilogram mark at 1.28 kilograms this week. So he is a lovely size. Now you'll notice that their weights will stop increasing in a huge amount each week now. And that's because these are mini puppies. And so they're not going to grow up to be any 60 pound dog or anything like that. Oh no, they're not. Oh no. Uh, they're going to be closer to around 18 and 20 pounds, much more like their mommy and daddy. Yes. Mr. Orange Collar still has quite a little bit of a voice. He does like to talk to us quite a bit. And uh, he usually is the very first one when we call them to come out. He is the first one out of the crate ready to greet us and see what's in store for him. So that's our lovely Mr. Orange Collar boy. Next we have Purple Collar Girl. Hello, Purpy. 
Here we go. Hi, baby girl. Now, Miss Purple Collar Girl, she was one of the first to learn how to use the pan as well. Miss Purple Collar has a good appetite, and she was very interested in learning all about the pan. And as I mentioned, she is the one who has the most teeth. She was the one who got the teeth the first, and she has quite a few of her teeth in. So when you're playing with her, you can feel those teeth when she decides to knock on your finger or on your toes whatever it is that she thinks she would like to chew on this little girl is a very sweet little lady she's quite quiet she's sometimes likes to be a little bit of a bully and push her little sister red collar over just because she's so much bigger purple is the biggest in the litter and red is the smallest in the litter and miss purple doesn't hesitate to remind her that hello I'm much bigger than you and I can just push you around if I want to. Now the puppies are all situated in their crates so that there's uh, pee pads all around them. Pretty much the entire floor surface that they have is covered in pee pads. And the reasoning for that is so they'll come out of the crate, they pretty much pee immediately that they come out of the crate, but that they learn that that's the surface that we want them to go on. So the pee pads are not grass, obviously, but they are a different texture from the floor. So that's what you're teaching your puppy when you're teaching them house training, that this texture is where we pee and this texture is not where we pee. This is why puppies tend to love carpet so much because carpet reads like grass to them. So that's something to keep in mind when you're house training your puppy. It's easier if you have a hard surface rather than a soft one. So if you have area rugs, we always suggest that you roll those up and put those away until your puppy is a little bit older. So Purple Collar, she's very good at going on the pee pad. She really has no problem whatsoever finding where the milk is, either from uh, Bernadette or out of the pan. And you'll see that we talked about last week about coats lifting, and you'll see how much her coat is lifting here. And Miss Burpee Collar is at 1.31 kilograms, so she's an awesome weight. So that's our little Purple Collar girl. Next, we've got our little tiny miss, Miss Red Collar. Hello, pretty girl. And Miss Red Collar had to have a little bit of a cleanup before we shot this video as she had a nice icky streak all over the top of her head. I'm not sure if she got her head into the pan or if somebody swiped at her with their paw or what happened there, but she definitely had, had quite a streak of food stuck on her head there. Didn't you, little girl? This little girl is a doll. She is just the sweetest one. She has so much personality. She is a very intuitive dog. She is a clever dog. She is a very responsive dog. And she has great eye contact, which is already quite clear. As you'll see, she's looking to me for reassurance, checking out what I'm saying and what's going on. And why are you holding me up here? And what is it that we're doing? Having these videos done is a really great experience for the puppies. It's something that's different. It's something that's unusual. It's still contact with people and it helps them to build trust with us as they learn that nothing bad happens and it gives them something that's oh, not something that's part of our normal everyday activity. And it's easy. She may like this toy, but she may just feel that when she's being videoed that she doesn't want to interact with it. They're just starting to understand what toys are. And in the next five days or so, toys will become more important to them. So Little Miss Red Collar Girl is our extreme party and she has beautiful, beautiful color on her ears. If you go to the website, you if you look at um, the Our Dog section and go to Spirit, you'll see a much larger version of what Red Collar is going to look like as an adult. Spirit has very much the same coloring with color on her ears and otherwise cream, except for this little one is not a cream because she is not going to have a black nose. She has a brown nose, rose nose, liver nose, all the same thing. So she will be a caramel as we've said all along. So she's a caramel extreme party, whereas spirit is something entirely different, but that's a story for another day. So little Miss Red Collar Girl is, as we said, the smallest in the litter and she is 1.03 kilograms. 
So that's Little Red. And now we have Mr. Blue. And Mr. Blue Collar is tied with Ms. Red Collar at 1.03 kilograms as well. So the two of them are this week, or at least today, the exact same weight. Now tomorrow they'll probably be slightly different. Their weights do change quite a bit uh, from day to day. And as I said, their weights are going to start to level off now that they're four weeks and that you will see that they won't be growing so much because they're minis. So we're not going to get great big huge dogs and great big huge growth sport spurts, right baby? Now one of the other things that's going on with the puppies now that they've moved into the doodle den is exposure to a lot of different things. So they no longer have Bernadette sleeping with them overnight. What we do is we leave everything open so Bernadette has full access to the puppies and to our bedroom during the night and she can choose to come and go however often she sees fit during the night. So she goes in and checks on the puppies usually two, three times during the night. She'll not nurse them every time. She just likes to go and make sure that everything's fine. Um, and then she usually uses, usually nurses them once overnight and then around six o'clock again in the morning. So it's great, it works out really well for her. Bernadette gets a break from them. Bernadette really enjoys sleeping in the bedroom with us and it gets the puppies well on their way to being independent and gets them started on a bit of a feeding schedule too. So after this week, when, but, um, when the puppies are five weeks old, we'll start cutting Bernadette back and we'll start regulating how often she is feeding them to start the weaning process. So it's, it's, it's such a quick process. It seems like they've hardly just been born and already we're talking about weaning them. But they'll be well able to eat more salad food. Right now they're eating some goat's milk, some pablum, and they also have a little bit of what's called puppy mousse. And puppy mousse is a special canned food that meets all of the requirements for little tiny baby puppies. Yes, it does. So we'll keep them on that until they're five weeks and then we will introduce them to raw food. And we'll just do it slowly. When they're little, sometimes we wait a little longer for the raw food because they don't have all the teeth there. And they have to have their teeth so they can manage the raw food because the raw food has some bones in it very fine ground up bones for the product that we use for them but it also has uh, bigger chunks so we don't want to be giving them something they're not comfortable eating because of course we want them to always be having a good experience when they're eating are you fidgeting around now mr blue collar boy he is our chocolate sable party and you can see that his coat is also lifting quite a bit. I'm just gonna put him down here. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So you can see around his ear here, it's really coming up. Also around his neck, we've got lots of the wave coming in. It's just beautiful. He's going to be a very handsome man when he grows up. And you can see all the different tones in his coat and that's from the sable coloring. And those will continue to change for a few years. Um, if you look again on the website, you will see Ripple on the Our Dog section. Ripple and Bernadette are both sables. And you can see there's a difference in color between Bernadette and um, Ripple. And if you look at Gigi, who's Ripple's daughter, Gigi is also a chocolate sable. And again, she is a different shade. So that's one of the really neat things about sables is every one of them is unique every one of them is slightly different. And that's why they appeal to me so much. They're always pretty and you never know exactly how they're going to be until they are all grown up. And even if you look at Ripple's pictures from when she was a baby through to now, she's quite a bit different than she was as a puppy. She was very close to uh, blue collars color. When she was a puppy, she had very similar markings. Now, if you follow on our Facebook owners page or on our general Facebook page, you'll see pictures have been posted this last week of Ripple when she was a puppy because Ripple just had her own puppies. And you'll be able to see and identify that change in colors. And we'll find some pictures of Bernie when she was a puppy and put those up too. But her color has not changed as much as uh, what Ripple's has and what this guy's is going to do. Bernadette's always had a lot more red tones in her coat and uh, she still retains that really pretty like strawberry blonde kind of coloring. So Bernadette herself is doing great. She's feeling very happy to go outside. She's totally confident in leaving the puppies on their own now. 
She's happy to be, uh, have the opportunity to be in the house more with us, right next to us, with the puppies a little bit farther away, but always where she can still see and hear them, but where she isn't required to be constantly with them and monitoring them. Now, Ripple has been watching Bernie do this, and Ripple figures she should be able to do this too. So uh, Ripple is a little bit coming out and going, hmm, how come you're out more than I am? But of course, Ripple's puppies need her pretty much 24-7 right now, so she does a lot of dashing back and forth. Bernie's enjoying the time where she has more time to herself. She likes to sit on her laps in the evening. And one of her cutest little traits is no matter where you sit, Bernadette will find your feet and she will be sitting on your feet. It's really adorable. We always have a foot warmer. So she's either under our desk or under the dining room table or she's on your lap if you're sitting and watching TV. And when I'm sewing, she comes and she sits on my feet. And when I get up to press the fabric, she's always, oh, really? And then she'll give up and go sit on Reynolds' lap. Now you see Mr. Blue Collar Boy is chewing on my thumb here because he's working hard at getting those teeth through. So he's at that stage where everything goes in the mouth and it's all about getting those teeth through. He has uh, not too much teeth department yet, not too much in the te tooth department yet. So it, when he gnaws on my thumb, I don't feel it at all. Whereas with purple, uh, yeah, sometimes it's ow. <laughs> so that's the litter and that's a little update on each of the puppies and on Bernadette. Now next week we are doing our puppy family visit and of course that is going to be a little bit different given the circumstances with COVID. So we are doing all of that by live video and we're going to do um, a live video with each of the families on our reservation list and then we'll do a group get together as well. So if you have any questions or comments, everybody can hear what everybody's saying and it'll be a great experience for all of us. So usually what we do is we have you all come to our house, you all come and sit on the floor and the puppies all run around and meet all of you and, and have lots of fun interacting with everyone. So this time I'll be on the floor and they'll be interacting with me and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on and tell you if a puppy does something, what that means to me and what we do with our notes in regards to that. Now, speaking of them not meeting a lot of people, quite a few people on our litter list have been asking us about, geez, how do we do effective puppy socialization when there is social isolation and social distancing? How are we going to get our puppy to be okay with that? So we have a couple of things that are going to work to help you with that. First of all, we're going to release another video this week that is just about socialization and how to get your puppy properly socialized during COVID so that there's no risk to you, no risk to the puppy, but there's all the benefits still for your puppy and why indeed having it done this way is actually beneficial for many puppies. Now this litter is small. There's just four of you on this litter list. One of you is a guardian for us and the other three are companion puppies and everybody is enrolled in our Head Start program for this litter. So that enables us to start right away with working with all the puppies. We don't have to wait until allocation day and go, oh yes, this one's in Head Start and this one isn't in Head Start. So the puppies are all going to be getting the benefit of that for a much longer period than normal. And we are going to expand our Head Start program to do a bit more of an emphasis on socialization for the puppies so that when you take them home, they're already well on their way to being successful. So don't forget social socialization, the window closes at 12 weeks. Part of it is open to 16 weeks if you really push the envelope and the puppies are here until they're 10 weeks. So most of that responsibility and most of that is accomplished here by us. And we will make sure that we do enhance socialization so that your puppy when they go home is already quite confident. So make sure you look out for that new video that's coming um, so that you get some tips and tricks on how to uh, carry on with successfully socializing your puppy during COVID. And that will be out later this week. We will release that on Sunday for everybody. 
So thanks so much for watching. Please post any questions and comments uh, below here. If you started thinking of some names, post those name choices. It would be great if we know what you're thinking of calling your puppy. We can just use that name and use that word doesn't mean we're going to apply it to a specific puppy, but all of them will get used to hearing that word. Now I know our guardian puppy's name, if she's a girl, is going to be Belle. So I already use Belle quite a lot. And her registered name is going to be Kel Belle Surprise because it's a surprise pack. And so that's what a surprise. So they hear me saying that all of the time and they hear the word Belle. But I don't know anybody else's choices right now. So perhaps you would like to post those in the comments and we can start using those names. And if you have any questions about their colors or their size, and let us know what do you like most about these videos? What else would you like to know about your litter? Are we leaving something out that you would like to know more about? We're happy to make the videos work for you because that's what they're for. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a thumbs up if you did. And we look forward to seeing you next week and doing things a bit differently with our puppy family visit. Thanks so much for watching.